everybody thanks for watching this on replay if you're watching from replay um, but you can always join me live by turning on your notifications and joining me live so if you haven't met before my name is Dr. Changron and I'm going to talk to you about uh, sugars substitutes and artificial sweeteners as we like to call them so there's been a lot of research done on artificial sweeteners especially in the animal models and uh, we know one particular thing about them is that artificial sweeteners are highly highly addictive in fact, there is a um, study that's done on mice where um, they took two groups of mice and they gave, them, they gave them either cocaine or they gave them artificial sweeteners. And the, um, time and again, the mice always chose the artificial sweeteners. They worked so hard to get the artificial sweeteners. Uh, even if they were addicted to cocaine before, they still went to artificial sweeteners. So um, it, it triggers a very highly, highly addictive response into our brain. And one of the reasons probably is most artificial sweeteners are about uh, 1,500 to 2,000 times sweeter than regular sugar alone. And so if you have something that's so highly addictive, um, and in theory it has no calories, right? So, so what, what does it matter? And it matters a lot, and here's why. A lot of the artificial sweeteners um, stimulate your brain for that addictive response, but it also makes you want to eat more throughout the day. And it makes you want, it makes you crave carbohydrates and, and things that are readily available. And so, if you are drinking that can of Diet Coke or Diet Pepsi, um, you st still stimulate the highly addictive response in your brain. And throughout the day, you're just making not so great choices um, because of the addictive response. And because of that, um, diet drinks still progress um, towards diabetes just as much as uh, regular sodas do, because regular sodas do very, very similar things. And so, um, you know, two points is one, it's highly addictive, and number two, it makes you want to eat more. And let's go back to the, to the research side of it. And once again, it's another mice study, right? And poor mice. <laughs> but um, and they, they found out that uh, the, the mice who were exposed to artificial sweeteners actually craved to eat more. And they gain, um, f um, I think I think it's 14% more of body fat over a period of time if they are continuing to eat those artificial sweeteners. So yes, humans aren't mice, but if you think about it, you know, we're wired very similarly in terms of the primitive function of our brain and the addictive response. And so, not great for you, right? So, and you know, there are all sorts of artificial sweeteners that are out there, and you know, saccharin is the one that gets the bad rep because it's, it's linked to uh, bladder cancer in mice, once again in mice. Um, but uh, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of the other artificial sweeteners, um, they're not really shown to have a significant harmful effect on uh, in cancer itself, but the effect on the body's metabolism is absolutely detrimental. Artificial sweeteners also slow the body's metabolism. Now, why do they slow the body's metabolism? When, uh, when we taste artificial sweeteners, once it stimulates our brain to, uh, for that addictive response, um, our brain thinks that we have a lot of body, we have a lot of sugar in our body, right? But in actuality, we don't. There's the disparity between our brain and our body, and because of that, the body's metabolism slows down because the brain thinks that there's a lot of a lot of blood sugar that's available in the body. So biochemically, there's a mismatch between what the brain thinks and what the body has as nutrients. And so when that happens, your body thinks that your your blood sugar is is low, but your brain thinks your blood sugar is high, so it makes you want to eat even more. And so that's a, that's a very detrimental effect. And so. Are all uh, sweeteners the same? No, they're not all the sweetest. They're not all the same, but they're all just as addictive. Um, now, and if you guys follow me for a very long time, I used to talk about stevia a lot. Um, and what stevia is is it's it's probably the most natural of all the the sugar substitutes, and in in moderation is good. And I know I said last time I hate to use the word in moderation, but if you have to use something, <laughs> use stevia in a very little bit. But what I suggest for you is just to get away from sugar substitutes altogether, okay? Just get away from them um, because they're still highly addictive and it doesn't do you a whole lot of good. There's not a whole lot of health benefits. What it's doing is that it's, it's grounding you into, the, into your previous habits and that if you're still looking for something that's sweet on the tongue, then, then sugar substitutes, even stevia, is going to perpetuate that habit. And so in the fight of obesity, in the fight of um, type 2 diabetes, a lot of things that people do are habitual. And if you are fighting to go away from your habits, sugar substitutes is not the way to go. Sugars is not the way to go either. Sorry to say that. 
Um, but and so you're like, well, what can I do to sweeten my coffee or anything like that, right? And so what's interesting is that when people start getting away from the sweet stuff, especially artificial sweeteners or even uh, sugar or molasses or agave, they find that um, if, if they take away all that stuff and they start eating sweet stuff again, they're, they, they feel that um, they feel that sweet things are a little overly sweet now because they've been desensitized from that. And that's exactly what the brain is doing. The brain is going back into an equilibrium function where it's saying, hey, you know, now that we're not overloaded with sweet stuff, I can actually taste things. And so your taste buds are, are changing. Your, the, your perception of the taste is changing. So instead of using sugar substitutes and sugar, just stay away from it. If you want to sweeten your coffee, I suggest using soy milk. Uh, the milk alone has a little bit of, of, of sugar in it anyways. And uh, you're, you're saying, well, that's not sweet enough. And if you're saying the words, that's not sweet enough, maybe you're a sugar addict, right? And so think about that for a second. So just to recap everything, um, first, if you find this valuable, please share it onto your feed. I wish that a lot of people can understand this. But just to recap everything, one, uh, sugars and sugar substitutes, especially sugar substitutes, are highly addictive because of how uh, sweet they are. They're about 2,000 times sweeter than normal sugars. Number two, they don't offer any health benefits. It's, in fact, it may be detrimental to your health because they slow down your body metabolism. Number three, there's a disconnect between the brain and the body. The brain thinks that you actually have sugar in the body. The body doesn't, so it actually makes you want to eat more. And you gain, um, well, in mice model, they gain about 14% more body fat, which leads to obesity and type 2 diabetes. And number four, processed sugars tend to lead to obesity and diabetes. If you sip on that Diet Coke, you know, it's still, it's still doing, so it's still not altering your, your disease state uh, towards uh, obesity and diabetes. Um, number five, if you have to use something, I suggest stevia, but, you know, I hate to use the word in moderation, I think substitutively, but I, I'm going to say in moderation for right now, but um, no one has to use stevia. No one has to use a sugar substitute. Eat food that are natural, eat food that are, that are, that are grown from the ground, um, eat things that are not processed, whole foods, whole foods and whole forms, and that's what you go by. Eat things that are different colors of the spectrums of the rainbow that are whole and natural, um, like uh, like bell peppers, um, like zucchini, squashes, and stuff like that. Uh, uh, cabbage, cabbage comes in all colors, purple cabbage, and because all these different colors signify that these foods have significant antioxidants and phytonutrients, that's going to do good for your body. Okay, so. Um, Thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will catch you guys next time. All right. Please hit share button and share this to your feed so everybody can learn too. All right. Thanks a lot, guys.